day 86. Now we slept in the teepee in front of the minor scrub stake last night, which is a good thing I popped my tent because it did rain last night, it poured. And there's a hole in the top of the teepee that just rained on my side of the tent. So yay, but not nearly as bad as it would have been if we had been out. So this is an awesome place to get to post up a teepee in a tent. I felt doubly insulated. Oh my God. I think I slept for almost 12 hours or at least was in bed laying down for almost 12 hours trying to catch up on the sleep deficit that we picked up in the basin because we had to wake up so early and there was no place to get any rest anywhere in that section. It was just exhausting. At any rate, you can probably hear all the voices in the background. The restaurant is supposed to open at 8 and there's already a bunch of people waiting outside for them to open the doors. So we're going to have a breakfast here and then uh, walk a road to South Pass where the trail walks through about four miles, four or five miles up from here. And then I think it's like a sort of cross country road connection to get to Highway 28 so that we can hitch up into Lander today, which is a full service, full size town. So short day walking, but you know, uh, more, more like a sip and saunter, except for heavy on the sauntering minimal sipping because it's still morning and I, I sipped I sipped last night I sipped four times mm. oh, good stay looking forward to uh, another beautiful day in Wayne we had a great long breakfast at the miners grub steak here in Atlantic City Dale and Laurel the owners here super nice they're the ones that have the teepee you can stay in for free and the food oh my god the food is amazing so definitely recommend to stop here just really nice people very hiker friendly a decent hiker box in the corner a lot of information about the area and uh, they have ice cream and some like small snacks and stuff like that they have a little merc like it's funny that the mercantile doesn't actually sell goods but the restaurant does so <laughs> yeah but they're really nice people and this was an awesome stop. But now we're gonna wander down to South Pass um, where the trail hits back up. And then we're gonna make our way from there to uh, Highway 28 so we can hitch into Lander and take care of our actual resupply business for the next segment. So uh, yeah, off like a herd of turtles. It's a cool historical sign about Atlantic City, but I like the last sentence. It remains a community of resilient souls where modern homes coexist with historic log cabins in one of Wyoming's oldest cities. Resilient indeed, because oh my goodness, I don't know how the people live here. In the winter time, it's gotta be a little, little hairy, but great place, really like this town. And they turned 150 years old last year. Oh my gosh, that guy totally looked like an old miner, but he's in his razor. Awesome. They have an, a walking tour in Atlantic City. You saw all the number of signs everywhere. Correspond to a number on the little brochure that you can get for free virtually anywhere, including the little kiosk over there in front of the mercantile. But, oh, they used to have a candy store here. I would have come in here and spent all the money, all of it. Speaking of which, apparently Laurel's son, Laurel and Dale, who own the grub steak, um, I don't, that can't have been the hotel. That looks like a newer old building, but uh, is raising money. He's paraplegic, is raising money to uh, uh, do the continental divide with an assistive cycling device like a sit down recumbent cycling device so i made a donation to that because that's pretty awesome that he wants to do that a great idea a great idea the hideout this town is just so cute i really enjoy it really enjoy it well just to show that even in a tiny place like atlantic city wyoming there's culture wars we have this there's trump guy down on the corner and then this Love it, honor, respect it, or get the hell out, we won't miss you. 
right across the street from this. <laughs> Passive aggressive flag warfare here in Atlantic City. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, as you depart, Atlantic City. About 57 people live here at 7,675 feet. That is pretty much the entirety of town. It's a cool, cool place though. I really dig it here. Out in the middle of nowhere. So much helpful signage. This bowl here, I can see why nobody lives here. It's windy as shit. BLM actually does a really good job of putting the signs here. Apparently we've already made it two miles. Could hardly tell because we're going uphill. I don't even know what time it is. But anyway, it's only like two, a little over two miles to South Pass City. They have a mercantile there. The CDT reconnects there. Apparently the section between Atlantic City and South Pass is also pretty much route finding. And there's no real established path because the road is so much easier to do. Met a southbounder this morning named Mud, who said he pretty much walked roads from Highway 28 into Atlantic City, which seems like, if possible, the way to go. Obviously, it's possible because he did it. So he's had to figure that out. I have no service anywhere. A little bit of Wi Fi. They have Wi Fi at the Grub State. But, oh my God. Verizon, Wyoming is the least Verizon friendly state or place I've ever been. Service virtually nowhere here. And uh, Laurel was joking that like on the Verizon coverage map, Wyoming is more or less like a whiteout block because it just doesn't, doesn't apply here. But AT&T, pretty good service. Nightcrawler had service in Atlantic City. None of us Verizon people did. Ah, now I know how he feels most of the time on this trail. But at least Mud said in Montana, the Verizon coverage is great. He had service pretty much most of the time every day. So that's great. I'm super glad to hear that. Hi. Hey, still climbing. There's no way to enter or exit Atlantic City without going up or downhill steeply. And if you want to leave, you're going up. Thank goodness it's a short walk today because it's windy as fuck out here. And it's a headwind, of course. <sighs> Man. Well, there was a sign in the bar. Beware that Wyoming is a windy state. The entire damn state is windy. Wow. This is the second of a couple of places we've seen like this where it looks like people have moved into old mine operations. Giant gangplank. The last one, the gangplank into, I think what is now the house, is completely enclosed, but pretty cool looking. Cause you gotta really wanna live out here though because virtually none of these roads are maintained. What they say, no winter maintenance from October through April. Uh, I'm not like an expert on this or anything, but I'm pretty sure winter is less time than October through April. That's like good, like half a year. And yeah, you want in and out, you gotta do it yourself. Half a mile to South Pass City. Woo! They keep coming up with different maps on this. Before I was two miles to Atlantic City, two miles to South Pass City, we lost a half mile somewhere. We're getting into South Pass City and there's this homestead. But what I especially like is it has a period basketball hoop on the pole that kind of blends in with the fixer upper. This place is kind of like uh, South Pass City, almost there. Uh, I think we're looking at the entirety of South Pass City. Not much to it. But yeah, we're gonna drop in at the Mercantile here, see what's up and then continue on to Highway 28 to Hitchin to Lander. Wow, those people, I wonder if they meant to have a grass roof or if it just ended up growing up there over the years. A 
was crazy. Reminds me of one of the little, the three little pig houses. South Pass City, Wyoming. Yep. Pretty sure we're there. Here are the vital stats for South Pass City. Roughly three cats, depending on how many coyotes are around. But this place is on, I think, the National and State Historic Registers. What? There used to be a brewery here? Where is it? The Rock House. Mainly it's just like a collection of historic sites. This hasn't really been a town since the 1850s. I have never seen anything like this before. Free admission for women holding public office, celebrating 150, 150 years of women's suffrage or right to vote. That's awesome. This is the state historic site, paid area. We're here basically just looking for the mercantile and then to move on, but this would be fun to come and check out at a time when we weren't kind of in a rush to get to someplace else. Thank goodness this sign is here because I saw this and that it's closed and for sale, but oh my God, the biggest long rifle I've ever seen out front. Closed and for sale. No! But whew, go back over the state historic site and see about this ice cream we heard about. So I asked in the um, state historic site office about where the store was because it's actually in the town. This is the old town and the admission is $5 for non Wyoming residents. But CDT hikers get to come and tour it for free, which is pretty awesome. Although I wish I had a little bit cash to leave for a donation because I sure would. This is actually a really nicely done, really nicely maintained site. But anyway, apparently the mercantile with the ice cream is next door. Apparently this literal hole left in the wall used to be a saloon and brothel. It's hard to imagine where it was fitted in between the Carissa Saloon and whatever that is. Maybe that's the store. But yep, this is where you got your vice on in South Pass. Well, the general store doesn't have a sign on it, but it's definitely the general store. This place is awesome. It's super hiker friendly. They take, they accept hiker box like uh, packages here. There's a hiker box in the uh, store and a register. Um, we actually found these six moon design bags in there, which is awesome. Start using those for the breakfast bags. It's an, uh, alternate to the Stellan Circle bag is maybe I'll actually start eating more on this trail because losing a little bit too much weight, too much food, too fast. And over here, apparently, you can practice panning for gold, which is kind of cool. So that's awesome. I'd definitely love to come back to this area in the van, explore it a little bit more, spend a little bit more time here. The people have been really friendly and cool. It's been a great stop at the South Pass State Historic Site. Super friendly, super hiker friendly. You know, they have the little store here. Not much going on in there, but a little bit of fun stuff and great historical information of like mining in Wyoming. Oh my God, these are some hardy people that would live out here. Anyway, we're on to Highway 28 and hopefully an easy hitch and a lander. Well, the CDT makes this crazy, like, goes south, goes west, and goes back north again to meet Highway 28. This is the trail. You can see a blaze out there. But uh, we're taking a little bit more direct road and cutting off some of the unnecessary going in the opposite direction to get to Highway 28. A little bit north of the trail crossing shorter hitch but it doesn't really matter there's really only one way into lander and it's on that highway so hopefully we won't have a hard time getting a ride we're around the official CDT for a minute you can tell because there's cows before uh, shortly on the other side of that hill the trail itself will cut south which is dumb so we're gonna go north to get to highway 28 to cut off basically the X 
excess and unnecessary south and west part of the loop. Hello, cows. You can tell by looking at the trees which way the wind blows. It's just a light breeze right now. It's been windy as hell. But damn, all these trees are like lean the hell over. There's high rates for feet. You can tell because it's the only road around with signs on it. And the CDT meets up with it somewhere down there, which is silly. Because I believe this road goes right across those hills on the other side of the highway and reconnects with the CDT as it actually goes back in a northerly direction. Which, interestingly enough, is what we are trying to do. Head in a northerly direction. We'll check out this pile of historic rubble. Wow. I know there were rocks walking up here, but nope. This is a bunch of really old trash. Maybe it was a broken down homestead, but actually, now that I see it, where to go? I lost it. But oh, it's over there behind that little pine tree in the middle there. there. I thought that was maybe like a fallen down homestead because man, my depth perception sucks out here. But holy crap, look at this shit. That's bananas. doing my historic trash version of fire walking, I guess. We took a little break at the bottom of the gully and sat on some historic trash before we make up our way up, up to the road and try and find a hitch and a lander. I'm looking at the Wyoming maps and from here on out, all of the towns are well off trail. Hey. So we definitely have some logistics and route planning to deal with before we head back out. And also have to take into consideration how to, how and where to get off trail to get to California for the TEDx talk. Because that's coming up. Oh, oops, that's private property. Oh, I guess we're bushwhacking to the road. Damn. That's annoying. <sighs> Balls. This is probably why it's not on the route. But anyway, we could see Highway 28 from where we were. It's not that far. So we just walk along this fence line and go grab it. I'm gonna do that first. Damn it. It's always something. Well, luckily, there's this little animal track beaten into the ground next to the fence line. Oh, that's nice. A little less bushwhacky or cross country like. And uh, theoretically easier to see any snakes. And now there are fences. There's a sign over there that says that this is a conservation easement boundary. Not all of this was BLM. It shows roads on the map, a uh, road on the map that we were supposed to be able to be, get to Highway 28 on. But of course, we're running into fences and issues with private property. Again, the road is literally 1,000 feet away over that hill right there. So whatever, we're just going for it. It looks like we got to pass under two fences though to get there. Lame. So I got up the highway after crawling under two up with a ride when we were just getting sad and passed up a lot but he dropped us in the middle of lander gave us a bunch of information about grizzly bears and i'm now terrified thanks randy but he gave us some good information 
dropped us right off across the street from the post office. There's a gear shop right here, a family dollar back there, and a little lodge right here. I'm not sure where the city park is. I understand they have a free camping. And it's late, a little bit late. We don't really know exactly what we're carrying for at this time. We have a lot of route planning to do, a lot of shit to take care of. So I'm not sure how long we're gonna be here. I'm actually inclined to zero here to just plan out the entire rest of the state so we don't have to stress it anymore. But we'll see what uh, Nightcrawler thinks about that. But hopefully we can get shit taken care of and figure out a way out of here to get to California and uh, just make our way up and out of Wyoming. So, we just went by the post office that actually happened to be open and right across the street from where Randy dropped us off. I was able to pick up a uh, package. Susie sent me a pair of Injinsies. Oh my gosh, perfect timing. Thank you so much. And they did get here pretty much around the same time we did. So that works out fantastic. And a lady in the lobby gave us a recommendation for a good place to get some food because we're both starving. We haven't eaten since grub steak this morning in Atlantic City. And she kind of gave us a little bit of information on the lay of the land. Land is a lot bigger than I expected on the Gut Hook app. It pretty much just shows the crossroads junction we just passed. It doesn't show anything else. But there's a lot of stuff here. It's really a full service town. So we're gonna go get our grub on and start figuring out the logistics of the you know next leg, or ideally the rest of the state, since I don't wanna have to spend so much time getting off trail and hitching or hiking into towns if I don't have to. And it looks like possibly there are some places that are much more proximate to the trail where we can bounce ourselves boxes. So that would probably be worthwhile to spend some time doing some front end work so that when we're actually on the trail, we can just stay on the trail and not have to get off so much like this. Although I'm happy to be in Landers, it's super cute down. The lunch at Gannett Grill was delicious and uh, the Lander Brewing Company also has a bunch of beers at the Lander Bar next door. Their half is also really nice. It is hot as balls out here. Oh my God. It's 92 degrees according to the weather bug. <sighs> it says feels like 88. That's probably if you're in your car. At any rate, we're on our way to City Park where there's free camping which is nice and uh, hopefully find a place that has some shade, not like the KOA and Steamboat and nearest the creek so it won't be so fucking hot. And try to figure out how all of these logistics are gonna work. Finishing off, getting through this state, dealing with, I think, permits with Yellowstone resupply travel arrangements and times to California for TEDx. Oh my God, so much to deal with. And then it's already after six o'clock. So we'll see what happens. First, we gotta go find a place to park it. Okay, it's been a busy, crazy day. Anyway, um, I'm in my tent at the city park in Lander. This is a really nice park. Oh my gosh. I mean, I think there's even an ice. Oh, there's a mosquito here. Oh, bastard. Anyway, they have, this is a giant facility. This town only has like less than 8,000 people in it. And this park is super nice. And they let you camp in it for free, which is fantastic. Um, so just kind of hung out in the shade until it cooled off enough to pop the tent. And um, yeah, logistical issues have been stressing me out like crazy. I have this TEDx talk coming up um, on August 18th. It's TEDx Sky Forest in Southern California in the San Bernardino Mountains off the PCT. 
and I've been stressing about it hard. There's no Verizon service in Wyoming. It's like a dead zone. I haven't been able to really do any of the things I'm supposed to be doing to prepare for this talk or participate in the um, process leading up to the event, which has been stressful. And so, you know, and then also learning, you know, after having to hitch 35 miles to get into Lander, and then taking a look at the rest of the gut hook map of the state just to find that virtually all of the towns from here on out in Wyoming are the same way. The next one, Pinedale, requires like an 11 mile one way hike, then a 15 mile hitch just to get to a tiny town. Then Dubois or Dubois, however you pronounce it, is the same. It's like, you know, 25 something, maybe more miles off trail. And those are all up trail. Today is June 30th. So um, there are a number of things that are required to do the TEDx talk, which really is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I need to give that the attention, respect and time and energy that it deserves. So I decided that since I'm in a town, it makes the most sense, even though I hate doing getting off this early before the event. There are a lot of pre-event um, things happening like rehearsals and um, mostly rehearsals, stuff like that. But I mean, like my talk has to be approved. That hasn't even happened yet. I'm still not even sure all of what I'm going to say yet. There's supposed to be a script. There's supposed to be slides. I haven't done any of this stuff because, you know, I've been walking 20, 30 plus miles a day through a place with no service and I'm exhausted almost all the time. So I'm going to get off here at Lander and um, make my way back to the van in Albuquerque so that I have something to drive and stay in in Southern California, which will be my next destination. Hopefully arriving there on or before the 7th, which is when the um, onstage dress rehearsal happens. So yeah, that's my update. Luckily, um, you know, my, my friends are helping me get together with this and I've been in touch with the person coordinating um, Amina, who's coordinating this TEDx Sky Forest event, to let her know what's going on because I feel so bad that I'm sure she's probably stressing out because I look totally flaky, but it's not because I mean to. It's just because I can't do much with it while I'm out here. But I'm going to take the time off to do it because, dang, like who gets to do a TEDx talk? This bitch gets to do a TEDx talk. So it's time for me to start stepping up and paying attention to that. And that's, that's the plan for now. So tomorrow, working out the logistics of getting the hell out of Wyoming for a minute, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It definitely means that in order to finish this hike this year, which is, I want to do, like, I want to finish this hike. I don't want to have to come back and do this whole trail again just because I didn't finish the last, you know, part of the last half, you know, like I'm doing with the AT next year. So... Ideally, by the time I get back on trail, the mosquitoes will be dead, the rest of the snow will be gone, and it'll just be smooth sailing and fast hiking on up to Glacier. But in the meantime, I bring you Lander City Park. Yay, good night.